Freddy's home. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to The Haunted Beard. My name is Jake. Well, I am making my way through the entire Nightmare on Elm series. Today I am talking about Nightmare on Elm 3 Dream Warriors, but before I do, if you like videos like this and you are interested in horror and thriller movie content, that is what I do on my channel, The Haunted Beard, so click that red subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. Now let's get into the movie. So Nightmare on Elm 3 came out in 1987, and this story brings back our original final girl, Nancy, who is now playing a psychiatrist who is at a uh, mental institution, and she is there to help a group of teens deal with good old Freddy Krueger. So I want to start off by talking about a couple issues and negatives that I have with this movie so that I can spend the majority of the time talking about the positives because there are a lot of positives and there's a lot of good things going on. So let's just get a couple of the negatives out of the way first. First of all, and this isn't really a negative, so I, I don't really ding the movie, but there is definitely a dated element to this when it comes to the CGI and the special effects. And at no fault of its own, it's just simply a product of its time, but it definitely has a bit of a dated element there when the movie uses the computer-generated special effects, particularly towards the ending where there is a fight scene involving a skeleton. You can definitely tell it's green screen. So again, I don't really ding the movie too much on it, but it, it, it definitely reminds you that this movie is over 30 years old. My first negative, though, is I wish that the film would have done a little bit better job with the character development of the Dream Warriors, with the exception of Kristen. She's the one who's the most developed and fleshed out. I just wish it would have done a little bit better job giving us just a little bit more depth to the characters that we would have got to know them a little bit more, care about them a little bit more. But my main negative has to do with the character of the nun. Now, she's only in a few scenes, but her character is very pivotal to the development and direction of the story. She is really just a contrived character. She is artificial and just kind of, she is clearly a screenwriting character, where the screenwriter has to inject a character into the film to just give us information that we need to know, to, you know, tell us kind of where to go, what's happening, and ultimately, she's there to kind of give us information regarding how to defeat Freddy Krueger. And there's a particular scene where she's talking to Dr. Neil, who's one of the main characters, about Freddy Krueger. And she's giving us background information and then ultimately gives us information regarding how to defeat Freddy. And it's just a very forced, obviously written character that exists for the sole purpose of giving us information and, and nothing more. And so I wish they would have just handled that bit of the movie a little bit better, would have written her character a little bit differently. I feel like there's maybe a better way to kind of give us that information. And so that is my final negative because the rest of this movie is pretty freaking good and I really like it. So let's talk about that. First off, I think what makes this movie so good is that it brings back Wes Craven. Now, he isn't the director of this film, but he is responsible for the story and is also one of the screenwriters. And let me tell you, you can definitely feel his presence in this movie. This definitely has similar vibes to the original Nightmare on Elm Street. The opening dream sequence with Kristen is fantastic, and it just feels like we are back where we are supposed to be. The music during this sequence is really good. The atmosphere is just great and the production value and everything just looks good and feels creepy. I love the little technique they do when Kristen is running away and she gets stuck in like what looks like this muddy tar. That was one of the things that I really liked about the original film, the, sort of the running technique where these characters are really trying to run really fast, it seems like, but they can't really go that fast. And this one kind of ups that a little bit. And now 
you know, Kristen's stuck in this mud and she's trying to run away and it's like, you know, she's struggling so hard and she can't get away. I thought that was just a nice little little detail there that was just really good. And then she wakes up and goes into the bathroom and, and Freddie's hands come out through the sink handles, right, and grabs her and then, and then he makes her slit her own wrist, which is just really shocking and it's just a great way to cap off this nice, surreal, atmospheric sequence with her now with her wrist slit in the bathroom. And we know that, you know, this Freddy, he's not just trying to possess her and take over her body. He's back with a vengeance. I really like the setup to the story, and I really like the setting of a psychiatric hospital. It just kind of a creepy place that just works really well to feed to the atmosphere of the movie. I like how it kind of expands upon the concept of the originals because now you've got a handful of these kids all together in this one location who are all experiencing Freddy Krueger collectively together. But where I think Dream Warriors does great is in the character of Kristen. Because we find out in the next dream sequence that she has after she's at the hospital, she is now in Nancy's old house. She ends up getting attacked by this snake-like Freddy Krueger, which is just this great thing, a great practical effect, a great sort of creature aspect to Freddy. It's, it's Freddy unlike we've ever seen him before. They just really enhance him, and it's just a, a really cool uh, visual choice there. But what they do is they have Kristen, they give her sort of the supernatural ability to where she can now pull people into her dreams, and she pulls Nancy into her dream. And I thought that that's just such a great way to really just enhance the scope of your story. It does a great job by not completely changing the rules set up of the original, but going by those rules in the world that it establishes, but enhancing it through the character of Kristen. And it just makes the dream world so much more kind of expansive and creative that she can now bring people into this world. And I just love that choice. I love that direction. I think it's just great. Now at about 35 minutes in, we get our first kill scene with the character of Philip. And man, oh, this is a fantastic scene and just twisted and disturbing. It starts off, he's in his bed sleeping, and we get this cool kind of claymation, stop motion animation version of Freddy. Another aspect of Freddy, another sort of take on Freddy that we've never seen before which I just really like, just kind of these old school practical effects. I think they just work really well, and I really like just the creativity there and the variety there. And then Freddy slits him open and uses his tendons and walks him around like this marionette, man. And it's just, oh, so just disturbing, but so creative and just a whoever came up with that idea, maybe it was Craven, is just great. I, I think it's just a great kill. He leads him into the clock tower and then, you know, Freddy cuts the cuts the wires and jumps off the building. Everybody thinks it's a suicide, but obviously it's not. But man, what a just a gnarly kill. Now one of the critiques I made with part two was that I said it took way too long, 40 minutes for us to get our first kill. And Dream Warriors isn't too far ahead of that. It's only about 35 minutes in. However, the couple of dream sequences we get leading up to that actually have value and have story consequences to them, where the first one introduces us to Kristen and it, it tells us, you know, progress, progresses the story to now we know why she's in this psychiatric facility. And then the second one shows us her main ability in that she can bring people into the dreams with her. So the the dream sequences before this first kill have consequence and they're just executed so much better. There's just, I, I've probably said the word a few times already, but there's just atmosphere there and creepiness and just the, the, the music and the design and the colors, just everything just looks really great and just that atmosphere is just, this film oozes atmosphere with its dream sequences. It's just, it's just great. And just a few minutes after Philip's kill, we get the next kill, Jennifer's kill. And one of the things that I complimented about the original film was I love just kind of how seamless and smooth the transitions were to where you have a character who is awake to all of a sudden they're dreaming. It's not this like super obvious transition. It's just all of a sudden they're in the dream world and things are different. And this sequence does that as well. She's sitting there watching TV 
And then one of the characters on the TV show, Dick Cavett, who's interviewing this actress, he turns into Freddy Krueger. And it's just this great transition to where now all of a sudden we know she's dreaming. And the kill here where Freddy's arms come out of the TV and, and you know, he picks her up and delivers his famous line. I mean, how can you not love that, right? I just love the creativity there, the inventiveness in there, the kills in this movie are just top notch. So what ends up happening is Nancy gets Dr. Neil to use this sort of experimental drug to help suppress the dreams that the kids are having. And they end up doing this sort of collective dreaming experience through Kristen as she brings everybody in. And one of the kids ends up in a coma. And so Nancy and Neil end up getting fired. Then we find out through the character of the nun that Freddy needs to have this official sort of burial. And so Nancy teams up with Neil. They go track down Nancy's father as they bring back John Saxon because he's the only one who knows where Freddy is buried. And so him and Neil go to this junkyard to find the remains of Freddy. And Nancy ends up going back to the hospital because Kristen's been put in solitary confinement. And so she's got to go check to make sure that she's okay. During this portion of the movie, it, the pacing kind of slows a little bit. It feels like it hits a little bit of a lull, so it doesn't really hurt my enjoyment of it at all, but it, it does slow down a bit. But then it picks back up and, and gives us a pretty solid finale. So the Dream Warriors, along with Nancy, go into a collective dream through Kristen to fight off Freddy Krueger. The first little sequence we get of Terran, I think, is just great. It's this cool little set piece there, and we find out earlier on that Terran is in drug rehab and recovery and just the the choice to have Freddy's fingers turn into these shot needles right and that's how he ends up killing her is just oh man it's brutal and disturbing and just a just a another great a great creative choice there I just really like this final sequence here I just like the creativity that comes with being in the dream world Nancy Kristen and Kincaid open this doorway portal literally into hell as they go down to rescue Joey. And I, I couldn't help but notice here that I, I have to think to some degree that this sequence was inspired by Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. And if you've seen that movie and see this, you'll see some of the imagery there is pretty similar. They end up rescuing Joey, then you get a cool sequence in this hallway of mirrors, just another kind of cool idea. The effects here actually look pretty good, and I was I was pretty surprised by it. Then you get the big moment where Freddy kills Nancy, and we lose one of our favorite final girls. But I think it's probably a good call. It, it definitely just the, it gives the film consequences, it just gives it weight, and so... Uh, we lose Nancy, and then that is more or less the end of the movie. They end up defeating Freddy by throwing holy water onto his bones. So, look, Nightmare on Elm 3 Dream Warriors is is a fun movie. And, and I you know, I have my few issues with it. There's a couple things that bother me, but the, the vast majority of this thing is just really fun. It definitely feels more like the original film. You can definitely feel Craven's presence. The atmosphere's there. The kills are really solid. The practical effects are top notch. There's just a lot of fun to be had here in this movie. And so overall, I think I'm probably probably about a seven and a half out of ten for this. I, I, it could I could potentially seeing it get to an eight on on another rewatch, but uh, that's where I'm going to put it right now. Seven and a half out of ten. Uh, really like Dream Warriors. It's a fun one. So those are my thoughts on Nightmare on Elm 3 Dream Warriors, but let me know down in the comments what's your favorite scene, what's your favorite kill, what do you think of this movie? I'd love to hear from you. So next up, Nightmare on Elm 4, The Dream Master, and we will see you then on The Haunted Beard.